Did you know that there are scorpions in South Africa that are deadly enough to kill you? This video explores the deadliest species in the region and provides information on how to deal with them that could save your life. I'm Doug North from Season 12 of the History Channel show Alone. Our season in South Africa involved a whole new set of dangers, including bad water, baboons, Cape buffalo snakes, and these guys. Scorpions. Stick around to find out about the most dangerous scorpions in the Great Karoo Desert and how to deal with them. Scorpions are arthropods, a type of invertebrate that has segmented bodies and jointed limbs. They have four pairs of legs, making them arachnids, which is the same class as spiders. Scorpions are easily recognized by the pair of grasping pincers at the front and the long segmented tail that curves up above their body and ends with a stinger. Scientists have found scorpions dating back 420 million years. That means that they had been around for 200 million years before the dinosaurs ever appeared. Scorpions are adapted to a wide range of environmental conditions and can be found on every continent except Antarctica. In total, there's about 2,500 species. Uh, the exact number isn't precisely known. South Africa is a region that's notable for its biodiversity, and that holds true for scorpions as well, having somewhere between 100 and 150 species of scorpions. There are two main reasons for this diversity. First, the country is largely arid, which makes it ideal for scorpions who are particularly well adapted for surviving in dry conditions. Second, the region is topographically and geographically diverse with a variety of different mountains and rocks and soils, which provides a, an array of unique environments that have driven the evolutionary development of different types of scorpions. A few common behaviors among scorpions help them to stay cool in the desert. Many scorpions burrow into the ground and create homes for themselves. You can spot a scorpion hole by its characteristic long oval shape that matches the front silhouette of a scorpion. They back into those holes and come out. Next, scorpions are nocturnal hunters. They're out and hunting at night when that harsh sun has gone down for the evening. When food is scarce, they can slow their metabolisms down to about one third of the typical rate for arthropods. This allows them to live on one prey insect per year. In addition, they're able to absorb water vapor from damp surfaces and right from the air directly into their lungs. In this way, they can stay hydrated even when water is hard to come by. Scorpions give birth to live young that the mother then carries on her back for several weeks until they strike out on their own. Gah! All scorpions are carnivores, and they mainly prey on insects and other invertebrates. They're perfectly adapted as hunters. They can quickly grab an insect with those pincers and then whip the tail around to sting their prey and paralyze it or kill it. Scorpions are an important part of the food chain. They form a link between the smaller arthropods that they prey on and then the larger creatures such as birds and the mongoose, rodents, and lizards who eat them. Are the scorpions of the Great Karoo Desert dangerous to humans? Yes and no. All scorpions are venomous, but the vast majority of species don't pose a threat to humans. There are about 25 species that have venom that's capable of killing a human being. Three of these live in the Great Karoo Desert. Before we look at these species, let's get a feel for the dangerous versus less dangerous scorpions. As luck would have it, there is a rule of thumb that can help in this case. Let's take a look at two actual specimens from South Africa to illustrate this rule. First, this is a rock scorpion. On the other side, we have a species known as the rough, thick tail scorpion. So take a look at the pincers on each. The rock scorpion has big pincers, while the thick tail scorpion has very small, thin pincers. The thicker the tail and smaller the pincers, the more venomous the scorpion is. So the rock scorpion has powerful pincers to catch and crush its prey. It doesn't really need a super powerful venom. By contrast, the rough thick tail scorpion has tiny little pincers, so it must use a very powerful venom to incapacitate its prey. Scorpions are frequently cannibalistic, so if you were a scorpion, 
watch out for the scorpions. On season 12 of Alone in the Great Karoo Desert, we had to look out for three species in particular. As we've met already, the rough thicktail scorpion is one of the largest scorpions in Southern Africa, reaching up to about 18 centimeters or seven inches long. Individuals can be black in color, dark brown or yellow, sometimes with lighter legs and a darker back. Second, the Transvaal thicktail scorpion is a large scorpion reaching about 15 centimeters or six inches in length. It's dark brown to black in color with lighter pincers. And finally, we have the Cape thicktail scorpion. It's a medium sized scorpion that measures about 10 centimeters or four inches long. They're typically pale orange or yellow in color, and last two segments of their tail are often darker. Scorpion stings from any of these species can be life-threatening, especially in children. It's crucial to seek immediate medical attention if you're stung by one of these scorpions. So what are the symptoms if you are stung by a scorpion? The venom is a neurotoxin that affects potassium and sodium channels in the cells of the body. This may cause uncontrolled twitching or jerking or spasms, particularly in the face. Other symptoms include severe pain at the site of the sting. This pain can then radiate throughout other portions of the body. A slow heart rate, high blood pressure, or gastric distension are also symptoms that you might discover. Bulbar paralysis causes the victim to struggle to swallow and may interfere with their ability to pronounce words. They may sound almost drunk. The final and most dangerous symptom is difficulty with breathing, which may lead to respiratory failure. How does one stay safe in areas with scorpions like this? First, don't deliberately mess around with scorpions. That seems obvious, but it bears repeating. And remember that scorpions are nocturnal. Most victims are stung outside on the foot between sundown and midnight. Wear closed-toed shoes, especially when outside at night. Scorpions fluoresce under ultraviolet light, so you can use a special scorpion flashlight when outside at night to check the area. Be cautious when collecting firewood. Many species hide under branches or under loose bark. Be careful when packing up tents because scorpions like to hide underneath them. Shake out your shoes before putting them on after leaving them for some time. And finally, don't leave your things on the ground if you don't have to. You're inadvertently creating scorpion habitat when you do that. Some of the thick tail scorpions have a defensive mechanism in which they can spray their venom a short distance. This affects the eyes and respiratory systems of any would-be predators. In the event of a sting from any of the species that I've just mentioned, try to get a photo of the scorpion. This can be used to identify it and to determine what treatment is best. Get the victim or yourself to a hospital as soon as possible. Try to immobilize the affected area to slow the spread of the venom. If the victim stops breathing and you're able, apply artificial respiration. Here's what not to do if you're stung by a scorpion. Do not apply a tourniquet. Do not cut or suck the wound. Do not use ice or very hot water. Do not give the victim anything to eat or drink, especially alcohol. For it to work properly, antivenom must be administered by a trained medical professional. Opioid painkillers are ineffective and they could contribute to a low breathing rate in the patient, which could exacerbate respiratory distress. In many parts of the world, scorpions are regarded as a delicacy. This one I have here has been boiled and dehydrated, not fried, and has no MSG. Looks a lot like the rock scorpion. Here goes. It's really crunchy. It's really dry. A little bit like jerky. Not bad. Dare I say, stinger looking good? A special thanks to the good folks at Verve Biotech for providing the specimens of the rough thick tail and the rock scorpion. Verve Biotech works at characterizing the venom from reptiles and invertebrates to create novel diagnostics and treatments for people and animals that have been envenomed. Until next time, I'm Doug North. Take care.